Well, good evening, guys. What over here again? Um, as you know, from some other YouTube channels, um, I've normally posted a problem um, that I've had and shown people what's going on and blah blah blah. But um, this time, hopefully, it's a little bit educational for you. Um, I've got um, well, I have been flying a, an ASW28, and as you can see, the wing's a little bit worse for wear and. Tried to look for new parts of the wing, um, or new wings, and you can't get anything at a reasonable price. Um, wings are a reasonable price, shipping is just over the top. So I've decided to go about cutting up some new wings. Um, I've used a foam cutter, cut up some of this foam board that we've got over here in Australia. Um, and I thought I'd just show you how I've gone about it. Um, I know we've got some marks in these wings here. I intend to end up going over and um, fiberglassing the outside of the wing. So I'm hoping that'll take up any of the, the little indentations in it that I've got here. Obviously, I might have to build it up and... Um, yeah take some time to build it up and then, then sand it back and get something decent. So um, I've cut the wings in four parts. So I've got the outer side, I've got the inner on the left. That's the outer on the left, which I've done. Um, and I've, I've been tossing up how I'm going to go about getting the spar back into the center. Um, I've looked at a number of things on YouTube and there's, there's hot wire guns that have solder, like a solder gun, and they make a loop out of it and, and run it up through there, and it's that seems to me is one of the better ones. Um, Andrew Newton did one where he actually had an arrow shaft and, and made up a jig and, and sat it on the bench, drilled in from the side, and I just... As much as about time to make up the jig, I was just unsure that I was going to drill parallel or that was what I was scared of. Not saying that his method is bad or wrong or anything. Um, I reckon it's a great method. If, if it works for him, well, that's all and great. I wasn't sure about doing it, so I thought I'd show you another way around it. So I still have to take out some bits and pieces from this wing here as I have marked. Um, to get it to fit into the fuselage. Um, as you can see from the other one, I've cut out bits and pieces. I've got it probably 90% of where I wanted to get it to. Um, obviously, there's still some final adjustments on that. But anyway, um, this, this is the actual spar that comes out of the ASW28. Um, and I did notice on both of them, you, you've got a, a smaller, approximately six six and a half maybe seven mil tube on the end here and there is that little bit of movement tighten down the screw i've still got that movement on the other side it was loose as well tighten it down and it got it nice and tight um <clears throat> the square tubing that they've got that goes through the wings is uh i, I haven't measured it exactly but i would say it's somewhere around about nine mil square maybe ten mil on the other side so I've cut that out of the out of the other wing, um, measured up where I have to be as as you can see through the lines here. My method in cutting out the spars um, that I'm trying is basically lining up. Now the, the the bit of steel that I have here is just mild steel. It's probably about three mil thick, about twenty five mil wide. Um, and I've just lined that up along the edge. Um, got my uh, soldering iron, um, wound it up to 450 degrees. Well, that's what it says. Well, um, it says it's blasted up to 450 degrees. Cheap Chinese thing. Don't know, but um, it's working well. Method that I have is, and being awfully careful, um, is basically just running the iron along 
that steel rod that I have just ever slow, gently, and just a constant speed. Uh, now, I mean, your first couple of cuts you find are uh, very easy and very neat when it gets down to the nitty gritty side of things. I'll do it back the other way so you can see it as well. Um, you find it does get messy when you start to um, get down to the bottom where you need to get that extra couple of mil here and there. So as you can see, the idea is run along just nice and slow all the way through. Try and keep a constant speed. You find it does dissipate the foam, as you can see there dissipates the foam very quickly so um, that's where running along the metal rod I find is nice and easy and neat um, at least your sides are neat um, and it does a really good job uh, like I say it gets a bit messy when you start to to get down to the bottom um, to try and try and get everything out there. Uh, basically, once I get so deep, I go to the other side, line up, line up your bit of metal, and I'll start from here. Left-handed, I'm not overly brilliant at, as you can tell, but. There again, at just a nice, slow, constant speed. You'll find as you start to cut it out, it um, you work it out as you go. It's it's just nice and easy. Um, as we go there, we'll turn that back up. <coughs> I noticed that had just been turned down around about three fifty, and it doesn't cut half as well. So. Now that I'm back up around the 400 again, um, uh, no, well, if we plug it in, from jumping out of the plug, you find it works a lot better as well. As you can see, the light's back on again. So we're back up and running. Um, but like I say, nice and slow and steady. Um, I intend to, once I get all this dug out to where I need to be, um, I'm thinking I'll, I'll put epoxy in the base of it. Um, and then from the epoxy, then put my spar in there. Um, probably put a coat of um, fiberglass over the top. Uh, and then, like I say, with all the wings that I've got there as well, um, I'm going to fiberglass over the wings. I'm thinking at the moment I'm not going to use any matting in the fiberglass, just a straight fiberglass coat. Uh, basically try and save on a little bit of weight. Um, and... Uh, See how we go there. So as we say, once we get down to the nitty gritty side of it, you find it gets rid of the plastic fairly quickly. Now, one thing I will say is that I don't know whether these fumes are toxic. Um, if I'm not here tomorrow, you'll know they are. Uh, so maybe, uh, maybe. Uh, a a mask might be a, a very good thing to use. Um, as you can see, starting to get down there, reasonably neat. Um, like I say, fiberglass will fill any of the, the little indentations that you've got. One thing that I found is you need to be careful with, especially on the outside of the wing, be careful how deep you go. Um, I probably go a little bit overzealous here and, and go a little bit a um, little bit anxious and going hard at it but the fibreglass will fill that up and 
once I give it a coat of fiberglass, it'll probably take two or three coats of fiberglass and we'll, we'll get that back right. Um, with the, the larger wing, um, I didn't have any dramas. Um, what you do need to find is one thing I found is really keep your, your workplace really tidy. Um, as you can see with some here, I think you might be able to see it in the light, is the little indentations that I've got. Well, those little indentations are all this bits and pieces that I've got on the bench. So, like I say, I think the fiberglass will fill that up. Maybe it might take two or three coats of very fine, thin layers of fiberglass, and I'll sand it back with a, a really nice fine grit, something like probably 200, 240, maybe 300. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, I hope that's helped anyone. Um, and I hope and that's enlightened someone to give the wooden building a go. I've, um, I've played with the hot wire stuff a lot, um, but never had any real success. Um, I'm actually, to get these, um, I, I, I tried a number of things for the hot wire cutting, um, from 50 watt down light, like transformers um we had dimmer switches in there we had on off switches in there and and couldn't get anything to work um i have down on the end of the bench here is a um a raptor uh 1030 amp lipo battery charger it has a foam wire cutter um section in it that i went through and that seemed to work well um, the wire cutter that I've got is, um, it's probably nearly a metre, um, got the plugs in a little bit further. I've got 0.375 nichrome wire. Um, I did try and go with some um, fishing trace, uh, I think it was about 7 strand, about 5 mil I think it was, oh no, a little bit, 0.5 mil or something like that. It, it wouldn't work with the Raptor. Um, the Raptor was sensitive to it and has just said there's a bad connection, nothing's working. So um, went back up, got some more nichrome wire, and we went ahead and cut. Um, showing some of my worst cuts, <coughs> um, that was how some of them came out. Um, but in saying that, even if they come out that bad... Um, with this, the foam that we're using, now mind you, oh, all right, I'm probably rubbing a little bit hard for that and I've got some crap on my sandpaper, but if you rub that nice and light, you find that you get all the indentations out of that without too much drama. So, as long as you've got the, you know, like the, the, the profile that you're after, um, you can rub that back. If you've got, if you've got excess there, um, you can rub that back and get it fairly smooth. Like I say, I've got some shit on this sandpaper here, so it's, it's dragging it up just a little bit. Not a huge dilemma. Um, because like I say, your fiberglass can fill that later on, but um, a lot of these imperfections can be rubbed out, and like I say, you can see you can get it back to smooth. So maybe you know, like I'm um, I can't even see what grit I've got with that, but I think it's somewhere around about 60 grit that I've got, so it's, it's probably way not overly coarse to do your job, um, but you've got to be gentle. Um, so, but if you went up to 100 grit there, but be gentle. If you start to get, if you start to get a little bit heavy handed, like I am at times, I want things done quick, <laughs> um, you'll start to, you'll start to drag out little imperfections. So, but if you take it nice and smooth and, and slow and easy, you, you'll get a great result, you know, as you can see from these, apart from the indentations that I've got, you, you've got a nice smooth uh, finish. Like I say, I've got an indentation there, that, that was from a drop of the wire, but 
Um, that, that'll fill out with a bit of resin. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm hoping to do and hoping to achieve. So it's, uh, that was the easy way I found of putting a spar in. Um, <clears throat> quite possibly, I, I may even may even just cut that back at you know, 30 degrees or 20 degrees and come out about 10 mil or half an inch and then then just put a put a a, a, um, a piece of fiberglass tape over the top of that maybe to give it a little bit more strength don't know I, I, this is um, there's a whole new build for me um, and I'm learning as I go and YouTube is a great founder of um, of what I've learned um, if it wasn't for YouTube I wouldn't be in this hobby and Maybe I don't know whether I should be joyous for that or should curse it because it's, um, I'm down here probably, I don't know, 60% of the time when I should be doing other things like mowing the lawn and all the rest of it. But um, at least I'm having a red. All right, guys, have a good night. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, I hope you enjoy what I've, I've spent time doing for you and good luck with any of your builds and... Um, any of your projects that you got? Good night. Swatter.